In this video, we're going to learn where to chart cryptocurrencies and how to chart them on the TradingView platform. This is going to consist of how to find the tickers, which are the abbreviations for these cryptos, as long as the pairings that go along with them. We're also going to take a look at how to move the chart and navigate it in a more advanced way, and also how to use the different kind of drawing tools that we have at our advantage, such as trend lines and boxes. And finally, we're going to look at how to compare different kinds of cryptos on the same chart to check for performance and compare them against one another. So first things first, let's get into the pairings of these cryptos and understanding how to use and find tickers. So if we go up to the top left over here, we can see that it says Bitcoin to the USD. All we're going to do is click on this symbol search, go down to the crypto options. And if we make sure it's blank, we can see all of these different cryptocurrency pairing options. And there are thousands and thousands of these. So we're going to want to narrow it down just a little bit so that we can find what we are looking for. Now, in order to find the ticker for a cryptocurrency, we're going to use the CoinGecko platform um, to find these tickers. And we are just using this platform a second ago in one of the previous videos. But if we go back to it, we can see that all of these cryptos have a ticker right here. Bitcoins is BTC, Ethereum's is ETH, and so on and so forth. And so if we want to find a ticker, that's where we're going to do it at. And then when we come back to here, we're going to know it. So I just want to compare Bitcoin to the US dollar. So all I have to do is type in BTC to USD. And here I have all these different options. I can go anywhere from Binance to uh, Coinbase to Bitstamp to Bitfinex to FTX to Kraken, whatever I want. But today I'm going to be going to Bitcoin to the US dollar on the Coinbase exchange. And that's where I'm at now. But let's say I want to go to Ethereum to the US dollar. I can type in ETH to the USD under the crypto section. And I can also go to that one on Coinbase. And here I'm going to have some different charts that I have. But let's say I want to go to Ethereum to a different pairing. Maybe I'm in Europe and I want to compare it to the Euro. I can do that as well. So I can do Ethereum compared to the Euro and there's different pairings for that. Or I can even go to Ethereum compared to Bitcoin. And I can compare one cryptocurrency against another. And I can see that kind of performance. But let's go back to Bitcoin compared to the US dollar. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose this option here. Now, when I'm on the chart, you might notice that you can kind of move it side to side by holding down your mouse button. You can also move it up and down. And if you can't do this, you can come on to the side over here and you can actually use the side to compress your chart vertically. So I can drag it up and down. Maybe this is just too small for me. So I want to drag this up. I, you know, I want to make this more linear. That's just the way that I like to look at it. So I can do that over here just by dragging and holding my mouse on the sidebar where all of the different prices are listed. I can also come to the bottom and do the exact same thing to zoom in over here. Now, personally, I like using my scroll wheel, um, which is another option to compress your chart horizontally. And then if you want to compress it vertically, you just have to drag and drop over here. So you can zoom out a whole lot, actually. And I'm on a daily chart right now, but I can zoom out a lot on this, as you can see. And I can also zoom in a lot just by using my scroll wheel or even just using this bottom bar button. And here I can make it a little bit more vertical. And now, boom, the chart is very big. It's very in my face. And I can kind of set it to fit my need. Now, moving on, let's look at some of the tools that we have over here, because now that we know how to drag around our chart and move it just by holding down and clicking and navigating this to fit our needs, let's go ahead and, and talk about these different options that we have. So if we go to this first one, we can choose a couple of different options. We can choose trend lines, vertical lines, parallel channels, all sorts of different basic ways to draw on our chart. So let's just say that I think that I see some sort of a consistency here and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit for this one. And let's just say, you know, maybe I see a uh, resistance line right here on Bitcoin. So I want to connect these two pieces together. Um, these are two of the previous highs. And so this is just what I want to connect together. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to come to the top left, click on this option, click on trend line if it's not already on it. Now that you can see that it's blue, that means that it's active. And then all I have to do now is click where I would like it to start. It's going to start over here. It's going to keep going until I click that second time. And after I click that second time, it is then going to be set in place because we can see that we have our start point from the first click, our ending point from that second click, and now it's going to be here. But let's just say that I did it wrong. You know, you can either click on it, 
and then hit the delete button or you can click on it drag it around to wherever you would like on this chart or you can even grab the start point or the end point and relocate it by just clicking on the little dots that are connected to it to relocate it so that you do not have to go and build an entirely new line. But let's get through some of the other options. We have lines, we have arrows, we have angles, but let's just draw a parallel channel. Let's just say, you know, hey, I think that there is a very clear channel over here and I can do that as well. So the way that I do this is very similar to our previous option. I come up here, I go down, I click on parallel channel, now the first time is my starting point. I'm gonna drag down, and let's just say I want it to end here. I'm going to click a second time to form my ending point. And now this is just a vertical option. So now that I have chosen my starting and ending point horizontally, now I need to choose it vertically. So I do this by just dragging my mouse. I'm not holding down my mouse cursor at all. I'm just dragging it. And if I want to place it, let's just say, you know, I wanna place it right about here. All I have to do is click one last time and we can see that this is our third endpoint and now it's sitting here. Now all of these tools in TradingView can be adjusted in real time. So let's just say I want to adjust my starting point. All I have to do is click down on this little dot and here I can drag it around. I can also drag around the top. You know, I can make it wider and taller and change, change the vertical height of it. I can also come down to the bottom and do the exact same thing. And here, of course, I can come down and change the length of it down here as well. So it's very maneuverable, it's very tamperable. You can use a lot of these different options to adjust this, or you can even just click on it and then click delete as well. So we have a lot of different tools, but let's talk about the drawing tools. Maybe when you want to be, be a little bit more freestyle with our options, this is where we can draw in whatever kind of shape that we like. And once you do it, you can place it on here and all you have to do is click on it and hit delete if you'd like to get rid of it or even just click control Z. <clears throat> but let's say that I'm trying to show a friend something and I'm saying, hey, look at this awesome um, two bottoms that Bitcoin just had over here. And he's saying, well, what bottoms? You know, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You can go and click on this little brush tool or even a highlighter tool or one of these different shapes. You can say, oh, it's this guy right here. And then it's going to be uh, this guy right in here. And this is the range where I'm looking to buy Bitcoin at. So it's easy to show them these options. Or you can just come to the drawing tool and say, hey, actually, this is where I'm going to buy Bitcoin. And the way that you do this is you click, hold down, and then draw. And as soon as you release, it's going to stop your pattern. So I'm going to click, I'm going to draw. And here I can highlight stuff and show people stuff and say, oh, this is where I sold my Bitcoin here and this is where I'm planning to buy it here and I also bought some here and so on and so forth. And this is just a really cool sh uh, tool to show people a physical representation of what's going through your mind and the areas that you might actually even be interested in um, and so that you can chart this for yourself for a future point in time. And you can even draw like future possibilities and say, okay, well, maybe I think Bitcoin's gonna go up here and then reject here and then maybe I think it's gonna come up here and then break out and head in this direction. And you can do a lot with these drawing tools that really is exciting. And of course, you can also draw curves as well. You can show like right in here and uh, adjust these much like the other ones just by clicking down on the dots and adjusting them as well. And if you wanna edit any of these different lines and options, you're gonna see that mine are white by default. All you have to do is come down here, double click on these, and it's gonna open up the colors, the thickness, and a bunch of different options as well. So if you wanna change this, it doesn't have to be white, it doesn't have to be this thick, it can be more thick, less thick, a whole lot of options are available to you. You can even train, change the opacity to make it more or less transparent. So if I wanna change this to orange, I can do that. If I wanna change it back to white, I can do that. If I wanna make it less thin, I can do that. There's a bunch of different options that we can really do over here. And the same thing is with my candle chart as well. If I wanna double click on this, I can change the actual colors of my candles. So maybe instead of them being green, I can make them yellow. And now all of a sudden they're yellow and red. But um, I'm gonna reverse that because I think green and red is pretty much the standard when it comes to our candles. But if you do wanna change the color of literally anything, all you have to do is come up to it, 
double click on it and you can change a lot of your different options for it. No matter if that's a line that you drew or the candle chart itself, or maybe some of the complex figures and indicators that we're gonna get into uh, just a little bit deeper into this course. Now, of course, uh, on the left side over here, we have a lot of cool settings. We can set alerts for ourselves, which is something that's really cool. And we can go through our alerts log as well. So if you ever wanted to set an alert to be notified of something, maybe if you set an alert at just below support, that way you can notify yourself and say, hey, uh, something significant is happening on Bitcoin. So you can notify yourself in the app, you can show a pop-up, you can even send yourself a an email and notify yourself if something crazy is happening on Bitcoin. So maybe I wanted to set an alert up here on Bitcoin. I could do that so that I can know if Bitcoin was breaking out without having to stare at my chart. And that way I can send an alert to myself uh, in a bunch of different ways to know if something significant is happening on Bitcoin. Now, if I want to get rid of this, all I have to do is click on the alert section again. There's a bunch of different options that you can use to navigate the system. I can also see my nav uh, excuse me, my notification section over here where I can see people that I follow and what they're posting to their trading view ideas if you want to follow any people as well. Now the final thing is let's go ahead and compare a couple of our different charts over here. So all I have to do is come to the top. And at the top here, I can adjust my different kinds of time scales. I can adjust this from a candle chart to different kinds of charts if I want to. I can even add indicators, which we're going to do in a future video, but I can compare charts as well. So let's say I want to compare Bitcoin to the S&P 500. And I also want to compare it to, let's say, Ethereum. So I'm going to go ETH USD. I'm gonna add in Ethereum as well. And I also wanna compare it to something a little bit less popular, like let's just use Link to the US dollar, which is another crypto. So now over here, we can see at the top left that I have the S&P 500, SPX, Ethereum, and Link, as well as Bitcoin. And it's gonna show me what each of these colors are. But let's just say I really hate the color yellow because it's too close to the color of uh, the spy, which is orange. I can click on it, or I can come down here and double click on it as well. I can change the thickness of it, the opacity of it, as well as the color. Let's make this a little bit more of an agenda um, of a, excuse me, a magenta color so that we can understand which one this is very clearly. So now that I have all this, we can see that my original chart is still in a candle chart, and which is fine. You can keep it as a candle chart if you want, but let's just say I wanna change this guy to a line chart. Uh, all I have to do is either double click on it and change it this way, but I think the easiest way to do this is to come up, exit out of this, and click on the charting options in the top and move this to a line as well. So now I can see that my lines are green. By the top up here, we can see that it's green. We can see the different colors of all these other different ones. And now I can compare all of these different assets side by side and maybe see which ones are performing the best and which ones are performing the worst. And this can give me a lot of insight on how to compare one asset class against another or one crypto against another or even different markets against each other to see if some are inversely proportional or if some are paired and linked together and they move in the same direction. Uh, this is definitely a very, very cool tool to use and you can use it at your own discrepancy. So this is all of them. And we can, of course, zoom out, see all of these different options and how they have performed over time, which is a very interesting feature nonetheless. And how all this is measured is this is all measured in percentages, which we can see on the left-hand side is that it's no longer paired to a price, but rather a percentage. So when it comes to TradingView, these are the basics of it. I can also, if I wanna just hit uh, Control Z just a couple of times to clean the palette, I can also come over here and let's just say I do a bunch of, tra uh, of drawing and charting and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm gonna come back over here to my brush. We're gonna draw something here and here and here and we're gonna draw squigglies all over the place. But now I wanna get rid of it all, but I don't wanna do it all one by one. I can come down, hit the delete button in the trash can over here and the palette and the chart is completely cleaned off for us. And if I wanna add in cool shapes like arrows, I can do that here as well. This is another popular tool to show people areas of interest and you can come down here, you can copy them, you can paste them, 
You can change the size of them and the angle of them and where they're pointing as well just by clicking and holding on these different options. And you can place them wherever you would like. You can even change the color and the size again, much like everything else. So maybe I wanna change this to red because I think it could be a really bad thing. So I can come down and, and click on this red option. So that is an option as well. So when it comes to TradingView, there really is endless possibilities that we can uh, learn here. And as we progress through this TradingView series and this charting series, we're gonna understand the full depth that we can use TradingView and how we can understand uh, where price action may be going on a deeper level.